International, the Prayer Cathedral, the seat of His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. This morning, we want to welcome you to church. This is a place where divinity meets humanity. Amen. And as we are here in service this morning, according to God's word, the Bible declares we should enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So wherever you are, you just want to bring a thanksgiving to the Lord. Father, we are thankful for another opportunity to be gathered in your presence this morning. We have come from all works of life, from far and near, to encounter you and to, encourage, to, and to be with you this morning. Father, we've come, O oh God, that your blessings will be manifested in our lives in Jesus' precious name. Lord Holy Spirit, have your word have your way in our lives this morning as we engage with you in service today in Jesus mighty name amen beloved you are in a good place let's enter God's courts with praise as we join the service just bring adoration and thanksgiving to the Lord from wherever you are and let's glorify his name as we join the main service amen in praise and and in adoration this morning. God bless you again for joining us. I'll be with you. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Hey. Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. Give you all the glory.
Declare with your hands, lift that up. You are awesome in this place, Jesus. You are awesome in this place, so mighty. Oh, you are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place, so mighty. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome.
Now I see me by boy. Now I see me by boy.
Mohini, Yama will Suda. Nimonia, Nimonia, Yapaja, Rodina, Tommy, what to be the fool? Mohini, hey, where you are, your hands together and give him praise. Are you clapping? Are you clapping? With your hands lifted up, welcome to our second service all across the nations of the world. Welcome to our second service. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to be at your feet, to receive illumination, to receive light, to see as I ought to see. Say the ability to hear and to see is a gift from the Lord. To the Heavenly Father, cause me to have a hearing ear and a seeing eye. As we gather to receive the word, put your hands up, pray that prayer. Hearing ear, a seeing eye. In the name of Jesus, as never before, give us a hearing ear and a seeing eye. Empower us to hear and to see as we ought to, as never before. In the name of Jesus, we break through the clouds of resistance and opposition in the air, in the atmosphere. We break through the clouds of resistance and opposition in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Now, in Isaiah 61 verse 3, there are some few things that we want to tackle. Number one, it talks about the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness talks about beautiful ashes. But we want to deal with the garment of praise. The garment of praise. We want to release the garment of praise. Then we want to intercept the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness comes to exert on you. It comes to grieve you. You begin to feel this heaviness. Heaviness in yourself. Then you begin to feel restlessness, perplexity and restlessness. Come put your finger on it. Trouble on the inside. Confuse on the mind. Come make sense of anything. Don't know what's going on. You are just in a state of perplexity. Can't sleep. Can't make sense of anything. It's a spirit of heaviness. It's a spirit of of confusion is an evil cloud is an evil cloud it comes to exact on you it comes to afflict you today we intercept that cloud we intercept the spirit of heaviness then it talks about 
the oil of gladness for mourning. Every garment of mourning, the garment of mourning is a spirit of grief. You feel this grief, feel sad, like something is tying you up. Today be on time. Today I command you to be loose, on time. Disentangle from every entanglement. Disentangle from mental, physical, and emotional, and spiritual entanglement. Be disentangled as you put your hands together. Be disentangled in the name of Jesus. Be loose. Be released from every heaviness. From the garment of grief, of mourning. We intercept every garment of mourning, grief, heaviness. An evil cloud, a cloud of darkness, a cloud of confusion. We intercept that cloud. We dismiss that cloud. We dismiss every cloud of darkness, every evil cloud over you and your family, your loved ones, home and abroad, over this house, over this nation, by the blood of the covenant, as we stand in prayer, in defiance of every cloud of confusion, of every cloud of darkness, of every evil cloud, of every garment of grief, heaviness, mourning, be bound in the name of Jesus, be intercepted by the power of Jesus' name. Put your hands together, rise against it. Padusa, medu kasit, letu kadila sa, milantu kadila salan. Filahandu kasala, walaki tu kanda, pay tu kadis, litanda kusa, lianda kasalas, walaki city lia. Hear me. Psalm 72, Psalm 70, verse 2. Anyone, anywhere, design your head, waiting for an occasion. To make a statement. To make foolish of your faith in God and your commitment to the things of God and to prayer. Whoever they are, whatever they are working with and using, let them be disappointed. Let them be turned back and put to shame. Let the tokens of liars be frustrated. Oh, make diviners mad. Turn their wisdom and knowledge into foolishness. That they might know that the Lord does makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Say yes. Read on. Hey. Let them be ashamed and confounded and seek after my soul. Madi kalu wahasala. Anyone seeking our soul and the soul of our loved ones to hurt us, let them be confounded and put to shame. In the name of Jesus, somebody say yes. Ah, kidula kasalas. Go ahead. Let them be turned backward. Aha, uh -huh. and turn backwards me. Let them be disadvantaged. Let them be set back in their pursuit of us. Go ahead. And put to confusion that yeah. desire my head. Alika tu wasala sa. Whoever they are, whatever they are working with, from, from the home front to the financial scene, to the political and social scene, hey, to the economic and the media front and scene, whoever they are, whatever they are working with and using, to devise your head, let them be disappointed. Yea, let them be turned back. That seek and pursue our head and our life and our demand. As we put our hands together, let them be turned back, put to shame and disappointed. Come on, somebody. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Rise to the occasion. Madakusa. Lay to Kadila Kasa. Elatu Kandi Kasun. Lay to Kunda Kasalia. Elim Malunda Kasa Basadala Kasit. Now, quickly, before we get into the word, any spells they've cast on you 
from whoever, from wherever. Whoever is working the spells to manipulate you, to go in a direction that carries out the enemy's agenda and plan for your life. Yeah. To act in a particular way that disadvantages you. Whatever that spell is, like a remote control, whatever the spell is today, in the name of Jesus, we intercept the spell. We break the spell. Put us a break, break, break. Break the spell over my life, my loved ones, my house, this house, this nation. Let the spell be broken in the name of Jesus. Break the spell over our fathers, our mothers, our wives, our husbands, our children, our loved ones, our leaders, our nation. This house, leadership, command, spells, break, 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 break. I break the spells in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Say, I command a breakthrough. Say, I command a breakthrough in this service. Say, let there be a breakthrough. A breakthrough in this service, in all shape or form. Say, I command breakthroughs, breakthroughs. Put your hands together. I command breakthroughs. I command a breakthrough, a breakthrough, a breakthrough, a breakthrough in the service. Let there be a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I break through their resistance. I break through their defiance. I break through their opposition. I break through their spells. I break through their imagination. Breaking through the imaginations of the enemy, the wickedness of men. We break through their imagination. Put your hands up. Break through their imagination. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. It's time to stop this nice Christianity and realize that from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered as violent and the violent take it by force. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. One last thing, Nahum 1.9. There are imaginations. People are imagining things. According to data, 2024 is the biggest year of election in the history of the world. Over 60, 60 nations are holding an election this year. About 49% of the entire population of the world. So it's a year of struggle of power. It's a year of contention of power. It's a year of restlessness. A year of all kinds of expectation. And also it's a year of crossing the carpet on both sides of the aisle. It's a year of betrayal. It's a year of desperation. It's a year of uncertainty. When men and women will go to any extent for power, irrespective of who they throw under the bars, irrespective of what they do to hurt others. Hey, they will ignore the consequence of their action. And it doesn't matter how long you get away with anything. Please make no mistake. For it is written, Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. Be not deceived. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. For God is not mocked. Tell somebody, my God cannot be mocked. My God cannot be mocked. You can't mock him. He cannot be mocked. It's just a matter of time. Tell somebody, it's just a matter of time. It doesn't matter how long you're getting away with it. It's just a matter of time and it will catch up with you because God cannot be mocked. Yeah. Sometimes people get away with things and think that they become masters of it. And they use gifts and they use money and they use all kinds of things to try to appease God and get away from consequences of their action. No, 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 no. You won't. You can't. It doesn't matter when you take from the poor and others. 
and you kill and destroy others. And then you take from one and go give to a man of God or the church or orphanage or whatever. And you think that by doing that, your good works will exempt you from the consequence. No, scripture cannot be broken. You are in defiance. Yeah. You are in breach. And it doesn't matter the good works you display. Unless you repent. Unless you change your heart. And you humble yourself and realize that you can't go on hurting people and doing wrong by others and get away with it. It's just a matter of time it catches up with you. Many years ago, there was a man in this country. He was very powerful. He was feared. Feared. His name caused people to tremble. Many years after, I went to Kumasi to see the Asante Hine. On my way back, I saw him at the airport at Kumasi. He was sitting there with a walking stick. And I looked at him and I said, is that the man that terrified this nation? Is that the man that everybody feared? And I looked at him and I said, power has expiry date. It's just a matter of time. There come a time when everything comes to a halt. And on that day, the only thing that stands is the word of God. For heaven and earth may pass away, but the word abides forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. About 40 years ago, I was traveling and I met a vice president in this country who was so powerful then. He was sitting at the last gate to enter the plane alone also with a walking stick, all alone, very fragile, shaking like this. And I looked at him, and I said, if this is the end of all this power people strive for, kill for, destroy, hate for, devise, scheme for, if this is the end of it, I don't want anything to do with this. When I'm old and gray-headed, I want to be surrounded by my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and loved ones. I want to be loved and I want to have acceptance and the only way you can do that is to make sure that it doesn't matter how much power and influence and money and connections you have never lose your humanity don't lose your humanity you know I was telling somebody the other day I said I've known President Kufour since he was president before he became president and after he became president and I visit him every now and then and since he's been out of power, I go check on him every now and then. And every time I go, there are people there. Every time you go, there are people there to see the man. In queue, waiting to see him. Every time I go there, there are people there. You know why there are people there? It's because of his humanity. They are not there for money. They are not there for power. They are there because of his humanity. Because he learned the common touch. Though he was president, he did not lose his humanity. He learned to still connect to people, help people, invest in people, bless people. So even though he's out of power and he doesn't have the money you think he may have when he was in government, he's still very rich. And his, his riches... Is his humanity. His, his connectivity to humanity and to people. I was telling them, same about President John Dramani Mahama. Humanity. Humanity. Anytime you go to his house, there are people there. Cars are parked all over the street. They are there to connect. To connect. Not to power. Not to connect to money. But to connect to humanity. Connect to you. Relationship, humility. That counts when everything fails. Tell, let me tell you, money, power has expiry date. There come a time when money and power can help you. There are mighty people in this world who are billions of dollars, 
like the Gaddafis and the Saddams and so many others, the Hitlers. And there came a time when their money fails. There came a time when their power could not save them. Ah, Solukutun, Kalundavas, Selaya Katu Wakasin, Levuku Lakis. I said to the church the other day, I said there are people in this world, eh? they are so poor, so poor, that all they have is money and power. When you take away their money and their power, they have nothing. Because they think that the only thing that makes you relevant and gives you acceptance in this life eh, is money and power. So they live all their life wanting power, wanting money, only to find out at the end of it all that power and money has limitation. There's an extent to which power and money will take you, and that is it. But goodwill, the common touch, and your humanity will take you places power and money can take you. Put your hands together and give him praise. Please be seated. As we get into the word of God, we have some few things to do today. I asked, I called Bishop very early hours of this morning, about four o'clock, the Lord woke me up and said, declare a Passover. Declare. So I called, I said, Bishop, do we have enough communion for both services? He said, I'll try. I said, we must have communion service today. We must declare a Passover by the blood of the Lamb. Let the evil clouds pass over. Let every dark cloud that is gathering over us and our loved ones and over this house and our nation, let that evil cloud pass over. Somebody put your hands and say, pass over, pass over, pass over, pass over. I was to teach on facing the future without offense. Facing the future without offense. Then I said, I either preach that or I deal with keep declaring and keep saying it till you see it. And after I finished those two messages, I said, Bishop, I'm still not feeling it. I said, I am not feeling facing the future without offense. And I am not feeling, keep saying it till you see it. So I said, put aside all those scriptures. He said, what are you going to do? I said, we are declaring a Passover this morning. There's too much of afflictions, too much of pain, too much of sufferings, too much of restlessness and storms and stubborn situations in the life of families. A young man so close to the father attempted to murder and kill his father the other day. A husband tried to murder his love, his wife, and said he didn't understand and don't know what came upon him. He was triggered. There are all kinds of triggers going on that we need to intercept. Strange fires, strange fires, strange circumstances going on all over the place. You hear what families are going through and you can't make sense of it and say, what on earth is going on? There is an adversary. There is an adversary. On loose. He's been loose. He's on the loose. And Peter said, he said, be sober. Be vigilant. These are the days of being vigilant and sober. These are the days of having a sound mind. These are not the days to be arrogant. And these are not the days to be ignorant. And these are not the days to be prideful. But these are the days of being vigilant and sober. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking 
about seeking who he may devour. I refuse to be devoured. Ah, tell somebody, I refuse to be devoured. Tell somebody, I will not be devoured. I will not be devoured in the name of Jesus. That means you can be devoured. You can be ignorant of his devices. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it talks about we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2, 11, lest Satan should have or get Satan should get an advantage of us, uh -huh. for we are not ignorant of his devices. We can't be in the dark anymore. We cannot be ignorant. The Bible says, for my people are destroyed for the lack of illumination, lack of light, lack of laser discernment, lack of insight, lack of a seeing eye, lack of a hearing ear. My people are destroyed. I refuse to be destroyed. Tell somebody I refuse to be destroyed. I refuse to be in the dark. I refuse. I refuse to be ignorant. You know, when you go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it talks about the different armor. The, it talks about put on the whole armor of God. And if you look at, it talks about the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. And it talks about the belt of truth and different pieces of the armor of God. But there's one thing, there's one armor that is not here that we so need in the days we live in like never before. And that is the armor of light. The armor of light uncovers, exposes, and it reveals the hidden plans of the enemy in darkness. The armor of light is laser discernment that it doesn't matter what he's cooking in the womb of time the armor of life gives you the audacity to know adulas awalakus ilatukun kasitanda kawasan telukusun kudavasin romans 13 12 romans 13 12 the night is far spent, the days are far night. spent. Yes, sir. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness mm -hmm. and let us put on the armor of light. This is an armor Ephesians 6 don't talk about. The armor of light. It exposes, it uncovers, it reveals the hidden things in darkness. I was in Atlanta, Georgia, some years ago in a conference. And in the service, I felt this restlessness inside of me. And there was this heaviness on me. And I felt a spirit of grief, a spirit of grief, like waves, waves of the spirit of grief was hitting me in the service. And I couldn't concentrate on whatever the preacher was saying. Bobby Jim Mack was speaking. I couldn't hear anything. So I got up and I went to my hotel. I didn't know what to pray for. As I ought to pray. So I began to pray in the spirit. And my mind was unfruitful. My mind was all over the place. I couldn't make sense of what I was saying. But I knew I had to trust the spirit to pray through me. I had to let my spirit pray that knows all things to make sense and to reveal to the father, to communicate to the father of all spirits what was going on in the realms of darkness that I couldn't make sense of with my natural mind and understanding. Then suddenly, the awareness came to me that there was a problem with one of my sisters. So I called the husband and I said, Morris, what's going on with Dorothy? And he said, how do you know? And I said, what? And she said, he said, she's at the intensive care. It's not looking good. It's not looking good this time around. She went to give, her to, she went to give birth to her baby. And throughout her pregnancies, she had to do caesarean. They have to cut her with knife.
So this time again, she had to go through that. And there were some complications. And so when he said that, I said, okay, I'll come back to you. So I called my mom. And I said, mom, I need you to do something for me. And he said, what? I said, I want you to pray. Eh? And I want you to make an atonement for Dorothy. And I want you to tell the devil that this is between you and your daughter. And you want him to stay out of it. Then I said, I need you to repeal those curse words. And I know the implications of your words. And he said, what are you trying to say? I said, you curse your daughter. And he said, what are you telling me, my son? I said, you know, when we were young, and whenever you two have a misunderstanding, you will say things like that. Go ahead and disrespect me and dishonor me. But when you go to have your children, you, know, you will know what it means to be a mother. When you go to have your children, you will feel the pain and know what it means to be a mother, and you will never disrespect me again. I was a kid. I didn't know the implications of that. Until the Spirit helped me to understand and to make sense of it, that those words of my mother out of pain was a case. And throughout her pregnancy, she went through cesarean. They always have to cut her. And those cesarean, that knife was a result of this, my mother's pronouncement. She spoke out of pain and said, like my father said, and like Idahosa said to me, Bamba, you go grow. When I see people gifted and anointed who have been, been tested and tried and they are making noise and despising elders, I pity you. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. It's just a matter of time and you'll be tested and tried and you get to a point when your gift and your anointing and your success and your numbers is not holding on. And that is when you realize that the gift and the anointing is not for you personally or for your family. It is given to whosoever believes. So unless your own children and your loved ones develop faith in the gift and in you, they can benefit from it. That's why Jesus went to his hometown in Nazareth and he was limited. He couldn't perform much miracle. In his own town, he had to leave his own family and go outside to somewhere else to get results because the, the Bible said, his own people looked at him and said, what are you trying to prove? We know you. You are the son of the carpenter. Jesus, stop all these things you are trying to do. You can't prove anything. We know you. That limited and restricted. His ability, that was God in the flesh. He couldn't function without faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it is not about your gift and your anointing. It's about your loved ones having faith in God and in the gift and in the anointing. Other than that, even you yourself, if you don't develop personal faith, you can't profit from the gift. Others will, but you won't. That's why Elisha was sick and died of his sickness. And there was power to raise the dead in his bones, but he couldn't prevent his death. Because he had been developed personal faith to exercise the gift to his gain and profit. I was telling them in the first service that as I've grown and maturing, I checked a lot of things and I realized certain errors I made, unconscious errors, when I was growing up. Married very, very young at the age of 23. Didn't understand a lot of things. Ministry was tough in those days. So my life was always on the road. I was always gone. I was telling them about Bishop Ben. I used to go six weeks, sometimes eight weeks, to North America, South America, Asia. Travel for days to be able to make ends meet, to provide and take care of the family, because the church couldn't take care of me. And I learned, I learned very early not to depend on tithes and offering and depend on people because that will wound you. I had one experience and I said no more. 
I'm not depending on anybody but God. And I realize when I look back and I look at the lives of my kids, I realize that there is a vacuum that has been created that is going to take a lot of grace and wisdom to bridge that gap. And this was what created the vacuum. I was never there. I provided. I paid their school fees. I made sure they had everything they needed, but I was never there. And I'll go. And even when I come, most times I'm tired, so I have to sleep. And by the time I'm up in the morning, they've left for school. Because I wake up and pray at midnight and go back to sleep. So by the time I'm up, they've left for school. By the time they come back, I'm in the office. When I come back from the office, they are asleep. When they wake up, I'm asleep. And it went on for many years. And I realized just recently by revelation that I was an absentee father. That even though I loved them and I cared for them, I lacked understanding of many things that is not just provision and providing, but you need to have that emotional connection. And it wasn't there. So they have to raise themselves and they got to learn to be survivors and create all kinds of things in order for them to survive and to fill that void. But Nobody can fill those void and nothing can fill that void but the love of a father. And it is taking a lot of work to try and bridge that gap. Yesterday I took my grandchildren into the pool and I started doing aerobics with them in the pool. And as I was dancing with them and exercising with them in the pool, I realized that that was what I should have done when my children were like their age. And let me say this to you. Let me say this to fathers and mothers. I know you mean well, and I know you love your kids. And I know you got to provide and smith. And you got to go out there and work and fight because life is tough. And life is not fair. And life does not give you what you desire or expect by what you fight for. But in the mix of fighting for everything to provide for them, make a little time every now and then to bond with them. Because you're going to need it. Because if you don't bond with them now, there'll come a time and there'll be such a vacuum between you and them that it's going to take a lot to fill it. One of my sons, he don't call me dad. I've done everything to say, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, call me dad. And he keeps unconsciously calls me, say, say, say. Because he never saw me as a dad as he was growing up. He saw me as sir. He saw me as this anointed, gifted, powerful man of God, but not a dad. Because I was never around to play with him. To do things with him. So he can see me as a dad and a friend. And I'm trying to make it up. To work at it. To bridge the gap. And he takes everything you can take. You can think of. He takes every grace. He takes every humility. He takes all your humanity. Madula Kasan. Wasalahatu kifalu salas. Madi kusan kutan de kasi. I was talking to my one of my bishops and I said, I said, young man, how many kids you have? He told me, what is their ages? And I said, please make time. Make time for those kids. I said, you can replace your wife. You can replace anybody, but you can't replace those kids. They are born of your bone, flesh of your flesh, and it is your blood that flows through their vein. Make time, connect with them right now, because a time will come when it may be too late, and it will only take a divine intervention to bridge the gap. So they grow up. They grow up with all kinds of attitudes. And sometimes you actually say, what is this? What's going on here? It began a long time ago. We called them trauma. 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 And it, it, it creates triggers. Things will trigger them. The trauma causes triggers. And you see them doing things, acting out of character. And you actually say, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You just miss." Certain moments. There are moments in life that fathers and mothers must never miss. 
Ketu kusant kela kusu wadala hasa adili kimotun kifalasid. One of my children's birthday was up, and he said, Dad, my birthday is up. I need you to be around. And I'm supposed to travel. So I called my travel agent and I said, you know what? Cancel the ticket. Said it to cost. I said, it doesn't matter what it costs me. Cancel the ticket. And she said, Dad, you can travel. You can travel. You can go. I'm fine. I'm okay. And I said, no, you're not okay. I'll be around. I'm not going. Even though she said, you can go, you can go, you can go, she doesn't mean it all. She doesn't mean it. And it will be held against me one day. And it will pile up and add up to all the time I've been absent. So I said, I'll cancel myself. I'm not going. I don't care what meeting it is. I'm not going. I'll be here. And she said, when will you go? I said, don't worry. I said, oh, but you can leave that now. I said, no, I'm not going that day. I'm not traveling. It's your birthday. I'll be here. Nothing matters by your birthday. I'll be here. Because if you don't let them know that they are precious, they are important, they will grow up with this sense of they don't matter when they matter. And they work like they don't matter and do things like they don't matter. And you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You just missed certain moments. Le kutu kafasala. Salakatung kawasalan pivan kuwahasan ei lusulu wasin akusu walahasan kifulu kufasa kusulu kifasa amisuku amisuku mehusundu masit. Don't miss those moments. Tell somebody. Don't miss those moments. Don't miss. Don't miss those moments. Yeah. 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 Certain moments when they are graduating, certain moments, weekends when they are in boarding schools and all their friends and, 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 and loved ones, their families are coming and you are not there. And I wasn't there also sometimes because I was busy somewhere. And just putting them in a boarding school and paying those expensive school fees, I thought was okay. But that wasn't okay. And why is their friends, family, and parents come to be with them? And they are all alone and away from home. Father is not there. Mother is not there. You have no idea the damage. You have no idea the impact it does on them. The rejection, the torture. The torture and the sins, the feeling of abandonment and rejection, my dad is never around. Turn your Bibles, please, to the book of James 5.13. If any among you afflicted, let him pray. If any merry, let him sing psalms. God has set certain protocols. They are spiritual protocols and patterns by which things are done in the kingdom. And he said, if any, is there any among you in pain, tortured, suffering, afflicted, let him pray. And when I talk about prayer, this kind of prayer is a continuous prayer or praying. Pray till something happens. Pray till you see change. Pray till the affliction is lifted. Pray till you have a permanent solution. Pray till you have the note of victory. Pray till you feel peace in your heart. Pray till you have the note of victory. Pray till you have the upper hand. You can just pray and relax. You pray until something happens. It's a continuous prayer. Pray till the afflicted, the affliction comes to an end. Pray till your captivity is ended. Pray till it doesn't hurt anymore. Hayakasawa has it. One of my bishops said, Papa, how do you deal with the pain of betrayal? I said, you pray till it doesn't hurt anymore. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was dealing with a betrayer the other day, and he said, Papa, how, how are you doing? How you handle this? And I said, I'm fine. And he said, how? I said, I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the hurt because I've prayed myself. I've prayed myself to a level where even though the affliction is there and the betrayer is clear, I feel no pain. And I'm not angry with them. And I'm not angry with anyone. I have learned like the eagle to rise, to rise above the storm. Rise, rise above the storm. Don't react. Learn to be calm in the face of the storm. Believe God for the upper hand. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Are you clapping? This it's like you have malaria. There are certain medication doctors prescribe to help you deal with a malaria parasite. You can try any other thing and it won't work. And that is what it is. That it is only prayer that deals with affliction. Psalm 34 verse 19. Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Out of all, not some, but all. God said, I guarantee deliverance. If you pray, I guarantee deliverance. He didn't say many are the afflictions of the sinner or the unrighteous. As a matter of the reason for the affliction is because of your stand of righteousness. It's because of your stand of righteousness. Because the enemy don't worry about those he has already conquered. He's interested in those he hasn't yet conquered. So he will throw everything at you to get you to compromise, to backslide, to give in. But if you stand your ground, he will compromise. Are you hearing me? The strategy is to weary you and to say, after all these prayers, what else? What else? Somebody said to me yesterday, say, Papa, you, eh, if you stop all this prayer, 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 you'll be okay. And I said, even though I'm praying, can you imagine the things I'm dealing with with praying? So what happens if I don't pray at all? I said, young man, I said, young man, you're a child. You don't get it. And I said, thank you for your, for your gift, for your revelation. But I'm not convinced. You can't, you can't get me born again on this one. I'm already born again. I'm already a prayer addict. I'm addict. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to prayer. Can't help it but to pray. And, and, and James 5, he said, is anyone in pain? Is anyone tortured? Is anyone suffering? He didn't say go on the, go online, get angry, isolate yourself from the brethren and the family. He didn't say rebel. He didn't say find other ways of dealing with the pain. He didn't say smoke. He didn't say drink. He didn't say go after men, women. He didn't say all, he didn't say to do all the things we do to numb the pain or the suffering. It doesn't work. He said the only remedy and prescription to affliction is prayer. And so if you don't pray continuously as you ought to pray continuously, you prolong the affliction. You prolong it. Hmm. The many afflictions is not because you are unrighteous. It's because you are righteous. And it looks like the more you pray and the more you decide to take a stand for God and do the right thing, the more you decide that you don't want anything to do with that marriage man or, or, or that married woman. You don't want to have anything to do with that person. It, it, that is when that person is, is really crazy about you and throws all the things at you and give you all the things you've never had before and all that. Yeah. And you ask yourself, how come... All of these are happening to me. Rather when I've decided to take a stand for God. Somebody said to me the other day, he said, you know, I was, I was making so much money when I wasn't living right. When I was fooling everywhere, things were working for me. As soon as I took a stand for God, it looks like everything, 
everything is falling apart. I can't make sense of it. And I say, yeah, you'll be tested. Your faith will be tested. Your love will be tested. Your relationship will be tested. Your character will be tested. Your obedience will be tested. Anything that is not tested that you have is not yours. You can lose it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big you think you are, how sophisticated, how much loaded and deep pocket you are. It's just a matter. Everything will be tested. You see, you know why people boast, eh? And people walk around with a bad attitude and arrogance and proud. They don't study history. When you study history, eh, it will humble you. Because you see what happened to great people, to powerful people more than you and I. And you will see their end and that will humble you. If you study the empires of Rome and their power and who they were, and what became of them. And if you look at the pharaohs of Egypt, the book of Neza of the Babylonian Empire, the Al Ahasuerus of the Christian Empire, Alexander the Great, and so many others, the Hitlers of Germany, the Gaddafis of Libya, if you look at the powers, the wealth, the influence of some of these powerful people, eh, you humble yourself. You realize that you, eh, you are a tilapia. You are a mosquito. So take it easy. Tell somebody, I know you are very connected, but take it easy. Take it easy. Yes, sir. Take it easy. If you study history, eh, you'll be very humble. And if you go, if you go to the mortuary, if you go to the mortuary and you go to funeral houses and you see men and women so great and powerful lying in a casket, can't utter a word, and their rings, their watches, they are Louis Vuitton. And you name all those things. They are shoes. They are beautiful dresses. Heavy bank accounts, someone else, a stranger, is going to take it. And Solomon said something the other day. I think it's Ecclesiastes 2 or so. He said, I have applied myself. I have been wise, said Solomon, to acquire all these wealth and riches. And then listen to what he said. He said, but this is something I have observed, and it's also vanity. Then he said, I don't know who will succeed me, and who takes after, and who will inherit all that I have worked for, and apply myself for. Whether he will be wise or foolish. And he was, un he was, he was unwise, Solomon. He was unwise. He mishandled everything, and, and, and Solomon, no, it was rather Solomon. And Solomon was so concerned about what shall become of his legacy. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 from 17. Therefore I hated life because... Ecclesiastes the chapter 2. From verse 17. From verse 17. Listen, this Therefore one. I hated life because the he way said, that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. Yeah. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He said all is vanity. All this sweat and, and all these acquiring houses and lands and power and money and cities and foreign exchange and building this and acquiring this. And I, the people don't care who they hurt. The relationships they damage. Who they destroy. To acquire all the things they are acquiring. Meanwhile, you're not taking anything. As a matter of fact, even the shoes. Even the shoes. You, don't, you won't take the shoes with you. When I was writing my will the other day, you know what my lawyer asked me? My lawyer said, uh, Papa, your shoes. Who should the shoes go to? I never thought about it. He said, the shoes. Your ring, your watches, who are you giving it to? And I said, wow. I was facing the reality. I haven't thought about it. I have not thought about it. That you won't go with your shoes. 
Yeah. I like shoes, but it ain't going nowhere. Some of you women, I had this daughter of mine in America. She, we, we went for a program, and we couldn't find them. They went to buy shoes. And I said, why? You have enough shoes. Can I pray for you? He said, Papa, I don't want deliverance from this one. Pray to deliver me from everything, but don't deliver me from the shoes demon. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Uh -huh. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. Uh -huh. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Uh -huh. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored, mm -hmm. and wherein I have shown myself wise under the sun. Uh -huh. This is also vanity. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody say, yes, sir. Kadaluka Salatis. Hey! Hey! Take your time. Home. Don't lose your humanity. As you are succeeding in life, money, houses, investment, it's not everything. It will all go to somebody. And whoever it goes to may be a fool or may be wise. And whether he'll be wise or a fool, only time and the future knows. And only God knows. Ah, when you think of these things, eh, and if it doesn't humble you, you were not born. You didn't come into this world. You were a fool. I'm telling you. Yeah. We don't pray in tongues anymore. We don't sing in the spirit anymore. And there are times, you know, there's a scripture we quote all the time, but we quote it out of context and wrongly. Come to the book of Romans 8. I want you to begin reading from 26 to 28. Look at something. Look at it in context. You have to look at the pretext and protext to appreciate the context of the text. Other than that, you can misquote. Look at it from verse 26. Likewise. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm -hmm. For we know not what the, we should do. The word for. infirmity here means your inability, your inability to express the pain and to, and to pray as you ought to pray. You are restricted, you are limited. You are not praying intelligently and skillfully and wisely as you ought to pray because you are limited. You, you lack knowledge, you lack light. And illumination. That's why he talks about the armor of light. Because the armor of light is laser discernment. Where you come into a place of awareness of what is going on. The secret things in darkness are revealed unto you. Go ahead. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. For the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings. So there come a time when you can feel the burden. You feel the weight. You feel the heaviness on your chest. You can feel it. You know something is off. Something is wrong. But you can't put your finger on it. Like I said about my sister. And when my mom came back to me and said, I have done what you said. I called the husband and said she'll be fine. She'll be fine. For the first time, after having caesarean for all her children, she had the last one without caesarean. Natural birth. And the, husband, the doctor said it is impossible when they begin having their children with caesarean. It must continue that way. And you know why? There was a reason for the caesarean. My mother's words out of pain Created a knife. Adu kasan, kadulu kusalas. Today, let that knife be taken out. Let the sword be removed in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and say, I remove the sword. I remove the sword. I remove the sword out of my life. Out of the life of my loved ones. I take away the sword. The sword that causes constant surgeries. Hey, hey, I 
annul the sword by the blood of the covenant. I cancel the sword. Are you hearing me? Look at me. Sikain, Sikain, Sikain Bia Baba Brabo Mono. Mijina Yesu Mojano, Mitchem Ejantum, Ejantum, Ejantum. In the name of your put hands, Ejantum, Yetem, 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 Yetem. One Mojano, for Yesu Demo, Ejantum. Hear me, hear me. To medical science. To medical science, she needed caesarean to have the baby other than that. She could lose the child or lose her life. And the only way was caesarean. But spiritually, it was my mother's words out of hurt and out of pain. There is a word among the Jews and it's this word, shalom, shalom. Shalom has two meanings. One meaning of shalom is peace. Another meaning of shalom is destroying the authority responsible for the chaos that peace may prevail. Until you lay the ax to the roots, and uproot the tree. You can deal with the branches and the leaves and the fruits in changing nothing. There is always a story behind the story. Today I pray. I lift up prayer. Let the main cause, let the one responsible for the chaos in your life and in the life of your loved one, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Put your hands together. Pray that prayer. Let the one responsible for the chaos in our lives, in this house, in this land, in this nation. Let those responsible for the chaos in the name of Jesus be intercepted, terminated, terminated. Put your hands together. Destroy. Destroy, O oh Lord. Divide their tongues. For they are the reason for the violence and the chaos in town. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for two minutes. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Uh -huh. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yes, sir. And we know that all things work together for good to uh -huh. them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You see... The key to unlocking verse 28 is in 26 and 27. Unless you do 26 and 27, all things won't work together for your good. It can go against you. But if you do 26, 27, whatever they have cooked, whatever they have hatched, whatever they have devised, it doesn't matter how strong the conspiracy is and how close the thing is to you. It will turn for your good. Yes, sir. I said it will turn. And so right now, I command, I command every evil wind to turn in your favor. I command the tables to turn in your favor. Put your hands and say, I command, let the tables turn in my favor. Let strong conspiracies and devices turn, turn, turn. Let it turn in my favor. Let it turn. Let it turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Come with me. Come with me. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 14, 4, 14, 14, and 15, 14, 18. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. So when I pray in the spirit or I pray in tongues, I'm not communicating to men. I'm moving at another frequency. You can't touch me there. You can't access me. You can't decode what I'm saying. It's like 
It's like, you know, when, when you have a particular tribe and you are talking in the language of that tribe and there are people who don't understand that tribe. You know, sometimes I'll be talking Ewe or Awusa or Wala or Frafra with people from that area. And then I'll see others. Ghanaians, they want to know. I use a word sometimes, Yalamo, it's a Wala language. It's a, it's a particular proverb in Wala. And they ask, Papa, what is Yalamo? And I said, you need interpretation of tongues. Are you hearing me, somebody? So, so when I speak, when I speak in tongues, you can't decode it. My mind is unfruitful. You can wonder. I, I remember many years ago, many years ago, I was with a friend of mine, a prophet, Michael McCann. He's going to be with the Lord. And we were sitting in a hotel room, and suddenly I felt this presence. And he said, did you feel it? And I said, yes, I feel something. He said, they are here. And I said, who? He said, demons. He said, they've come. They want to hear our conversation. So let's switch. So he began to pray in the spirit, and I also began to pray in the spirit. And then the demons were looking at one another, confused. What are they saying? We're praying, we're praying in tongues for a long time, and then they left. Sometime we'll be in the car, and I'll be praying in tongues. And he said, Nick, Nick, do you realize the language you were speaking? I said, well, he said, you just spoke in, in Greek. In Greek, you're communicating in different language. I had a guy, he was in this church years ago, when we were in my father's house. His name was Ramios Musasa. And Ramios came to me one day, he said, Papa, pray for me. I'm confused. I, I don't know whether I should marry a Ghanaian or I should go home and marry. And I said, let us pray. As we were praying, I began to speak in other tongues. I started speaking in other tongues. Then he said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you. Thank you, Lord. I get it. Thank you. So I stopped and I said, Ramios, what is going on? He said, he said, you are speaking in my dialect. I said, what kind of dialect? He said, you just spoke in my dialect. My dialect. And the Lord said, I should go home. My wife is in Zimbabwe. That I shouldn't marry here. He has a wife for me in Zimbabwe. And I said, Ramios, what are you saying? He said, yes, Papa, you are speaking my language. It's very clear. And he went home. And it was exactly what the Lord said when I was speaking in tongues. But I didn't know what I was speaking. I was just speaking. We speak the language of angels. And God gives us utterance to speak. Are you hearing me? Go For ahead. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. Unto God. And God hears it. God knows what we are saying. So don't look at me with that your intellectual look. When I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful. My mind can be traveling all over the place. still makes no difference. My spirit is communicating to the father of all spirits. My mind may not understand or make sense of it. But my spirit is making sense of it. Go ahead. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when I pray in tongues, I'm revealing mysteries. Mysteries are being known. And a mystery is something that is hidden from you. So when we speak in tongues, we demystify mysteries. We uncover hidden agendas and plans and devices and conspiracy in the womb of time. We demystify mysteries. That is the power of tongue. One day my father said to me, he said, Nicholas, that language you've been speaking in my house, stop it. What is that? Can't you pray in English or in tree? What is that language? Stop it. And I realized that, oh, okay, the tongues is doing something. So me too, I'll go hard myself and I'll fire. I'll go to the rooftop, three in the morning. And I did it for many, many, many years. And there was a lady, an African-American lady, Peggy Menza. And she was married to a man who opposite my father's house, B.A. Menza. And after many years, she saw me and said, can I ask you something? That language you've been praying, you talk, you talk in a certain, what language is that? And I say, it's a heavenly language. Amen. Go ahead. He, verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edify means you build up yourself. 
when you pray in tongues, it gives you a lift. It gives you an advantage over the natural. You need that advantage. Go ahead. 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, uh -huh. but my understanding is unfruitful. So your mind is unfruitful, but your spirit is active. Your spirit is moving. Kadu sadas. Lekutu wa kasala Go ahead. What is it then? I will pray with my spirit. Uh-huh. And I will pray with the understanding also. Uh -huh. I will sing with the spirit uh -huh. and I will sing with the understanding You see, also. we don't sing in the spirit anymore. Some of you, a whole day comes and go. A whole week and a month and you don't pray in tongues. The gift is dormant. You are not activating the gift. You are not using it. You pray in tongues once in a while. Shalom, 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 shalom. Ask somebody, what is this shaking about? I go on for days, and all I do is to pray in tongues because I don't, I can't make sense of what I'm feeling. Sometimes I feel this heaviness. I feel, I feel this grief and weight. It's like something is trying to exact on me and weigh me down, and I have to pray in the spirit. Ah, dekusua sefalu katung kitu kasa wasi ata aludan akuanda avalutu kuwasalinda imalakundi kasalahan ah yekufusunka ilea tu kalin imanduka awundu kalihasia amalaya kutung kasalahasa and you have to also learn to pray in the, to sing in the spirit every now and then mm. Imamandu pian de la mabu, ilamamandolo, ileburu sungurian, ikurungadu, ilemoku sadia, ayende kufulia, ayende kawala sitia madala yu, ayende kawala hansia, yando masia, ayeki tukiando, ayalaman. Do Cassando Vosia in the Vundu Zaniangia, Amura la King Zanariando, in the King Vola Mamadi, in the Mamacu, Ayala Mama Sinea, Ayana Likin Sidingi, in Gunza da la Bunda, Ayandu Kimiando, Avelikiondo Savadadin, Avada la Madi. I don't need to sing in the spirit like if he sings. It's not about how sweet the voice is. He's making melody unto the Lord. He's lifting the burdens, breaking through the clouds. Ah, Sedolo Kasala Kasida. You don't pray in the spirit anymore. We don't know how to pray in the spirit. Yes. You got to learn how to pray in the spirit. In other tongues. For hours. And sing in the spirit for a long time. And you don't have to make sense of it. You do it till the, till the burden is lifted, till the pain is lifted, till the grief is lifted, till the heaviness is lifted, till the affliction is lifted, till you don't feel pain anymore. That is the way I win my battles. I was telling one of my sons, I said, son, son, this is the way I win my battle. Ali kasan, ale, iko wasalanda kafasan, imanda kasum galan, awasi ali tu kalia, eh sala, suda, uta, kudas, mada, ilafa, kus, kalis, imun, duans, takis, telis. Lift up your hands. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Pray in the spirit. Ha, ha, hey, hey. Somebody, open your mouth. Stop being nice. Stop all this being nice. Open your mouth. Fire. Lift prayer till the burden is lifted. Till you don't feel the pain anymore. Come on, somebody. Till the affliction is ended, is lifted. Open your mouth. Don't let the enemy exact on you. Kadus, lesser, 
Isala, Wasia, Akadala Sutan, Akantu Falin, Alinde Valun, Salahan, Ikanda Kasundu Kawan, Bevan to Kun to Kasabis. Hey, 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 somebody, whoever you are, wherever you are, open your mouth, put your hands together, fire. Push it, push it, push it. Let yourself go. Give yourself to prayer. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Let yourself go. Push it, push it. Hear me. Before, before we come to the Lord's table and declare Passover, I want every father and mother to come to the altar. Families are going through hell. There's a strange attack on families to scatter families, to kill fathers, to kill mothers, <clears throat> to kill children in the name of Jesus. If you're having issues with your knees, you don't have to come up. You can stay there and just pray. Balu salas, selutu ku walasin, ali kasalun, kefalu kusan, le halun, kidan kuan, selundu kali adis, adi kusan kadila hasat, ha, mosakalidas. Give me Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon. Satan. Oh, Satan had desired to have you. It means that Satan has asked for you. He's made a demand to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. Yeah, he said to have you. First of all means to capture you. To take hold of you. And after having you, to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I have, I have negotiated. For you. No, I have intervened. No, sir. By what? Prayer. He said, I pray. I have prayed for you. Jesus said, the I only way to stop the enemy is to pray. And this word here, that word, to have you sift you as we, that was Satan's plan and agenda for the life of Peter. Whatever the enemy has planned for you and your family, in the womb of 2024, let it be intercepted and let it be aborted. Look at me. Sometimes eh, things happen and you can't make sense of it. And you actually say, what is this? What is going on? You try everything you know how to and still it's going on. It's like a constant reoccurring cycle, cycles, waves. Look at, look at Hosea chapter 9 verse 14. Nothing happened by chance. As I'm talking to you, they are cooking things. They are burying things. Some of you are burying your picture, your name. But whoever buries anything in our name, let it backfire. Let it boomerang. Whoever takes us anywhere, to perform anything against us. Let it be over 10, over 10, over 10. Let it backfire. Let it boomerang in the name of. Now, look at Hosea 9.14. Give them, O oh Lord, what will thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breath. You see, there is a miscarrying, there is a womb. Say a womb. Say the womb of time. A womb. Children can't come into this world unless they are conceived in a womb. The womb of a woman is a legal entry to this earth. 
And in the spirit, there are wounds. So before the enemy carry out a plan for your life, it is hatch, conceive in what we call the womb of time. But today, today, anything they are conceived and they are hatching and they are cooking as the enemy's plan and agenda for your life, for your loved ones, home and abroad, for this house, for this nation, in the womb of time, in the womb of 2024 and beyond, let it be intercepted and aborted, abort, abort, abort. Put your hands together, open your mouth. Come on, don't hold your peace. Put your hands together, open your mouth. Intercept, intercept, abort, abort, intercept, abort. Any plan of the enemy concerning our loved ones, our families, in the name of Jesus, to cause pain, to hurt us. We intercept. We abort. Abort. Intercept. Abort. Intercept. Abort. Whatever they have programmed in the womb of time to cause grief, pain, let it be intercepted and abort. Butted in the name of Jesus, intercepted and aborted in the name of Jesus. Hear me. One of our sisters went to a funeral. Right there at the funeral, they went to the casket. And while they were closing the casket, the chair she sat on, somebody came and sat on the chair. And after the person got up and left. Then she went to the chair, prayed over the chair and sat on it. As soon as she sat on the chair, she got up. She started feeling dizzy. She started losing it. Energy and life was leaving her. She grabbed a chair quickly and sat down. Over 35 minutes, couldn't lift up her head almost passed out, rushed to the hospital, put on all kinds of drips and all kinds of intervention. You know what happened? The Bible said, where the carcasses are, there, eh? there, goddess, eh? evil birds, that's where they gather. Look at Psalm 41, verse 5. Enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? You see, that is what happens when you go to funeral. I don't say don't go to funerals. But every time you are going to funeral, anoint yourself. Take divine immunity. Because when you go to the funerals, the vultures are there. And they are targeting somebody who will go next. Some people, all they do in their life is attend funeral. Every funeral you go, they are there. My enemy say, when will he die? Anyone waiting to hear bad news about you and your family and your loved ones, let them be disappointed. Let them be put to shame. Put your hands command, let them be disappointed. And put to shame. That divides our head and demands. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Pray. Over ten. Over ten. Let them be disappointed. Put to shame. That divides our head and the head of our loved ones and our demise. Let the opposite of care. In the name of Jesus. Let the opposite of care.
Give me Ephesians 6.13. There is something the Bible calls an evil day. An evil day. And this evil day is a day that the enemy has appointed to have advantage over you and over your family and your loved ones. It's a day that takes you by surprise, unaware, unexpected, turbulence, strong and violent winds and storms. Today we block them. Today we override them. Hear me. Whatever evil day they have calculated. I was watching a movie where a husband and wife, they had a misunderstanding. And the woman pushed the man and he fell on the back and his head hit the center table and he started bleeding and died. That is an evil day. It didn't just happen, you know. The thing was hatched. It was cooked. It was in the womb of time. We call them time-sensitive attacks. Any evil day, any time-sensitive attack, in the womb of time, in the womb of 2024 and beyond. Hear me. Give me Esther chapter 9 verse 1. Esther chapter 9 verse 1. Now in the 20th month, that is the month of Ada, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred. Say the day. The day. Say any day in the womb of 2024 and beyond that they have programmed Devised and cooked an evil outcome against me, my family, my loved ones, this house, my nation. Say on that day, let the enemy be denied. On that day, let the opposite occur. On that day, let the tables turn in my favor. Put your hands down, pray that prayer. to pray this prayer one more time eh? and I intentionally I intentionally give you these prayer points the reason is because I hear too much and sometimes Bishop will tell you it just breaks my heart 
The enemy don't play fair. With Mary Mandalene, there were seven demons in one person. Jacob's great grandson, Gath, 6,000 demons in one person. The enemy doesn't play fair. His loving kindness is cruelty. Evil is never satisfied till it destroys good. A young man he used to come to church here. He went to school at Cape Coast University. His friends went to the beach to swim. He said he wasn't going to go. After a while, he decided to go. When he got there, they were all seated, having fun. Then the secretary from the school was swimming and she began to drown. So he ran to go and rescue her. In trying to rescue her, he drowned and she survived. That is an evil day. It wasn't by chance. It was cooked. And whatever was working it summons him. He was beckoned. Say, I refuse to respond to the beckonings of the enemy. Sometimes they beckon you, they call you, they summons you. And you begin to feel like going somewhere. It's not everywhere you go. Another lady, Bishop was talking to me about her. She had a surgery. I think, was it a brain surgery? And she succeeded. It went well. She was fine. She lived in a gated community. She got up one day and she said, oh, she's going for a walk. So she was just walking and exercising in her community. A car came from nowhere and hit her and killed her. After she escaped the brain surgery. Whatever wanted her was not satisfied. Today we raise counter attack. We raise counter motions. Hear me. My job, eh? my job is to make you aware of the realities of life and of things that exist in the spirit realm to stop making you live, the American call it, a life of naivete. Don't be naive. Don't be naive. Stop that naivety. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Any occasion the enemy is seeking by calculations, by programmings, manipulations, projections in the womb of 2024 to disadvantage me, to cause me pain or grief in any shape or form. Say, let it be intercepted and aborted in the name of, put your hands down, open your mouth.
Hear me. <clears throat> one more prayer. Tell somebody, pray one more prayer. One more prayer. You know, Hitler shouldn't have been born. Hitler shouldn't have been born. Idi Amin shouldn't have been born. Hitler was appointed to carry out Satan's plan for three million Jews. One man, he was given the mandate to carry out. What he did was not his plan. It was a plan that was cooked, hatched, programmed in the womb of time to annihilate innocent people. Three million. He was the vessel, the vehicle appointed to execute that plan. Haman, in the days of Esther, was the one appointed to carry out Satan's plan. Any man, any woman, any system, any vehicle, home and abroad, domestic and external, that have been appointed to carry out the plan of the enemy for our lives, the life of our loved ones, home and abroad, whoever they are, we intercept, we block them, let them disappear from the face of the earth. Put your hands together, pray that prayer. Any man, any woman, systems, technicalities, organization, legality, appointed, home and abroad, domestic and external, to carry out to execute Satan's agenda and plan for our lives. Whoever they are, we block them. Let them disappear. Disappear. Let them disappear from the face of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we command them. Disappear. 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 Let them not see the light of day. Whoever they are, let them disappear. Pray that prayer. Put your hands together. Let them disappear. Anyone appointed to carry out Satan's plan for my life, my family, my loved ones, home and abroad, this house, my nation, whoever they are, whatever powers they possess, let them be denied, stripped, and disappear, disappear, disappear. Let their defenses depart, 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 depart from them and let them disappear, disappear, disappear from the face of the earth. Hear me. Let's conclude with this scripture. Isaiah 41, from verse 10 to 13. Easy version. Easy version, Isaiah 41. I am with you, so do not be afraid. Uh -huh. I am your God, so do not be upset. I will make you strong. I will help you. My powerful right hand will keep you safe. Listen to this. Everyone who has been angry with you will now become completely ashamed. Those who have attacked you will disappear and die. Even if you look for your enemies, you will not find them. They will all disappear. Yes, I am the Lord, your God. I will hold you... I will hold on to your right hand. I say to you, do not be afraid. I will help you. Listen, let them disappear. Whoever they are, whatever they are working with, it doesn't matter how strong, tall they are, big. According to the scriptures, let them disappear. Home and abroad, whoever has been appointed to end your life or the life of your loved ones, your family, Home and abroad, 
this house, this nation, whoever they are, let them disappear. Put your hands together. Announce it. Announce it. Proclaim it. Prophesy. Declare it. Let them disappear. Let them disappear from the face of the earth. Let them disappear. They will not see the light of day. They will not carry out the enemy's plot. Let them disappear. Put your hands together. Let them disappear. the life of your loved ones and your families. We command divine escapes and preservations for your families, your loved ones, your children, your wife, your husband, home and abroad. Divine escapes, divine preservation. Put your hands together. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for their preservation. Whatever they are, whoever they are, let them escape. 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 Let them be preserved, escape, preserved, escape, preserved, by air, by land, by water, escape, preserved, divine, escape, escape, preservation, escape, preservation, immunity, immunity, take, divine, immunity, by the blood of Jesus, over loved ones, home and abroad, divine, escape, preservation, immunity, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, take your seats. Oya mi jira mechi sodo berima mi huwe oku mahami eti ma ka.
I want you to pray for your father, the Archbishop, and ask the Lord to deliver him from every evil. 2 Timothy 4, 18. Ask the Lord to deliver the Archbishop from every evil and to give him sweet victories. Ask the Lord, say, Lord, give your servant sweet victories. Give our father sweet victories. Deliver him from every evil way. Put your hands up, pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Deliver our father from every evil work and give him sweet victories. Pray that prayer. Lift it up. Those of you at home, wherever you are, pray that prayer. Pray for your father. Say, Lord, deliver your servant and his house and his loved one from every evil work. Preserve him unto your heavenly kingdom. Give your servant sweet victories sweet victories triumphs sweet victories the upper hand and upper hand in life do it Lord in the name of Jesus thank you let's bow our heads as every head bow every eye close if you are here today and you are not sure your name is written in the book of life it's a gamble you must never play it's a chance you must never take. Never hold back at any time of an altar call. If you don't have that assurance, it can be settled today. Make peace with your creator today. Be sure your name is written in that book called the book of life. If you are not sure about that, lift up your hands wherever you are. I'll pray with you right now. Say, Papa, pray with me. I'm not sure my name is there. I'm not sure my name is written. I don't have the assurance. Please pray with me. If your hand is lifted up, wherever you are, please come. Come. Come to the front. If your hand is lifted come. Whoever you are, if your hand is lifted up, come. I'm waiting for you. Come. And I want those of you who used to be in the Lord, but you backslided. You stopped being in church. Today you want to come back home. You want to make it right with God? Come now. Please come. Please come. I'm waiting for you. Come. If you must come, come. A day will come when it will be too late. You have the choice today, but a day will come you will not have the choice. Yes. So come if you must come. Come. Yes, sir. Ah. Mosali Kasalas. Ikalu Kasunda Vaziya. Lose your children, Lord. Untie their soul. Untie them. We break the shackles. Break the chain. Loose them, Lord. Let them come forth. Kamasuda. Kadila Kus. Italu Kadila Gaza. The Luka Fasinda. Amalukutum Kasalimba. Wasi Atalakasa. Hey, we break. We break. We break the snare. We break the spell. We break. Talu Kasa and destroy the veil. Let them come, Lord. Loose them. Loose them. Call your children. Angels assigned to those who will become heads of salvation. Move them. Move them, angels. Move them to come forth. In the name of Jesus. Want everybody lift up your right hand and say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that in sin did my mother conceive me. That I was born a sinner. And I need a savior. Jesus, I acknowledge you as the savior of mankind. I acknowledge you today as Lord and savior of my life. Write my name in the book of life. Cleanse me with your blood. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood. And let my name be written in the book of life against that glorious day. When all things will come to a halt and the living and the dead will stand before you to answer on that day let my name be in the book of life jesus name amen I want you to look at me congratulations i have a gentleman in a white suit and a blue tie behind you turn around please go with him he has something to give you and you come back and join us go with him pray for them don't just clap. Pray, pray, pray for them. 
Pray for them as they go. Pray. Keep praying. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Hey, are you clapping? Hey, my lucky sea. Ika saladi ando wasi ande le si. Ewa kasu ala handi ande wa ah. Malaki la wusu. Si meliku ansia e salua me da kutuku isu wala di kasi molerele ki wosi tuki e ma imala kisu. Hmm. Please come forward with your tithes, corporate tithes, personal tithes. Come forward with your tithes. And everybody take your offering. Remember, whenever you sow, you reap more than you sow. And when you hold that seed, it never multiplies. It only multiplies when you sow it. Corn and seeds don't multiply when you keep them. It multiplies when you sow them. So come with your tithes and come with your seed. In the name of Jesus. It's true. Oh yes, it's true. God's wonderful promise. I've trusted and tested and tried. And I know His promise is true. There are channels and vehicles to give. On the screen, please follow the instructions. Take your phone, take your credit card. Those of you at home, don't hold back, don't be lazy. Get up, sow your seed. As long as you hold on to that seed, it will never multiply. It only multiplies when you release it and you sow it. It's true, oh yes, it's true. God won that for promise. Trust and trust and trust and and I know His promise is true. Yes, oh yes, it's true. Cause one love of promise is true. I trust and and trust and trust. Stand on your feet, lift up your tights and your offerings, let's pray. It's true, oh yes, it's true. Lift it up. God's wonderful promise is true. I'm trusted, trusted, and trying. And I know His promise is true. Somebody put your hands together. Praise the Lord for the life of our Papa. There is nothing like praying in the Spirit. And we thank God for that powerful word and the experience we have all shared. Can you lift up your voice and give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Amen. You want to lift up your tithe unto the Lord? We know that we give the tithe in the earth, but the Lord receives it in heaven. And therefore, Father, we have come in obedience with all the tithe, and we are coming back to say that without you, it would not have been possible to take possession of what is in our possession. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said that bring the tithe and prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing such as 
you have not imagined to make room for. Father, you said that you will rebuke the devourer. And therefore, by this act of obedience, we declare the devourer according to your word rebuked. We declare new windows of opportunity open for your people. New avenues of revenue release. And we decree and declare that indeed, we shall experience the true blessing of the time. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please put your tithe on the altar. Get your offering ready. Indeed, God's wonderful promise is true. As you get back to your seat, you may pick up your offering, your seed, whatever you have in your hand as a vow, your seed of dedication, whatever seed it is, whatever sacrifice, please lift it up unto the Lord. Father, we thank you because seed time and harvest time are ordained by you. We declare that our seed are giving on good ground. We declare that no devourer shall by any means rob us nor deny us of the harvest of our seed. We decree and declare that the harvest shall indeed be plentiful. We decree and declare that the rain of heaven will water and nourish every seed and that the harvest expected shall be released according to your divine timings. In the name of Jesus, as we give, let the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow be released to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The praise team will sing. Please give your offerings. Amen. Please pause. We have a communion service this morning also, so we will combine the two. So the choir will pause a minute. We'll, we'll bless the communion table. The temple protocol members will be positioned around the offering boxes. As you drop your offering, you pick your communion. This morning is a special Passover communion service. So please hold on a minute. We'll pray over the communion. The Bishop Emeritus, Joseph Nyakwinchi, will pray over the communion table. Father, this is not man's idea. It came from you. You sit in heaven and you watch over everything. Let this Passover communion we take today in this house be before you that heaven will move against every secret agenda and plan that is hidden from human beings from the eyes of men but before you is open now let your word which is active powerful sharper than any two edged sword pierce even to the divided asunder of soul spirit joints and marrow a descender of the thoughts in hands of the heart neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight of your word all things are naked, all things are bare, all things are open unto the eyes of whom we have to do with. That is the word of God. By this mystery of this communion today, let heaven stand for your people, for this house, for the Abishah, for our nation. Everyone that names the name of the Lord, let this table be before you a Passover that you disappoint the expectation of the crafty. Their hands can perform their enterprise. If the princes of this world knew, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. By this mystery today of this communion table, Father, step in and say enough to the adversary. Let your people live and serve you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the Lord's table is blessed, consecrated, dedicated. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, the power of your Spirit. We thank you for life. Thank you for lengthening of days. Security and protection, we give you praise. Watch and do your people good because you are life.
for the sake of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, sir. Thank you,
Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. It's at the table of blessing and the cup of blessing. Today we decree and declare that this table is a table of blessing and this cup is a cup of blessing. Amen. The Bible says, our Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. The Bible says the same way he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And Paul reminds us that you and I are to descend the body anytime we have opportunity to come before the Lord on such a day like this. Amen. So take a moment and pray and prepare yourself as we take the body and take the blood. Amen. Just a moment. Whisper a prayer unto the Lord. Jesus. Can you take out the first layer? Take out the bread. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us. Let's eat in remembrance of him. Pull off the second layer to expose the wine. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us. Let's drink in remembrance of him. your finger, anoint your head if you like. Now let us pray. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. By this prophetic act today, we decree according to the word of the Lord, according to the decree of the servant of the house, pass over in the name of Jesus. Let death pass over you and your household. Let shame pass over you and your household. Let failure pass over you and your household. Let disaster and trouble pass over you and your household in the name of Jesus. And now we command the healing of your body. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. We command healing in every cell, healing in every tissue, healing in every organ of your body in the name of Jesus. We command every disease out in the name of Jesus. We command tumors to dry up. We command cancers healed. We command healing in your joint, healing in your nervous system. In the name of Jesus, may every family disease be cursed. And may every trouble waiting to happen be averted in the name of Jesus. May God give you a miracle and a brand new testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Pass the empty cases to the protocol workers. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day to be alive. And now that your hands are free, let's put our hands together and thank God for the life of our Papa. For a timely word. An awesome word. Hallelujah. On Friday, we had a wedding here. Mr. and Mrs. Jassy, Rex, and Helena. And they are looking like angels today. Hallelujah. Can we welcome them? Put your hands together for them. I'm sure Rex has been very uncomfortable over the weekend because he is not carrying his normal camera. Now other people are taking pictures of him. He can't take the pictures himself. Can you join your hands? Hallelujah. Father, we give thanks for the lives of your children. They have begun this journey with you. And we are confident that with you on their side, they will succeed in this journey. Let the heavens be open over them. Let, oh God, your glory be a shield about them. Let them help them to succeed in this journey. And let their enemies be put to shame. Whatever they need to succeed, Lord, supply it without fail in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey. Rex is married. Hallelujah. Congratulations. I like your smile. Put your hands together for them. They have a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. If you are trusting God, 
to get married, the same God who did it for them will do it for you. Amen. Let's welcome Minister Dickness, Vicky, to do the service. Vicky Dixon. Put your hands together for the woman. The one with the yellow. pleasant it is for brethren like us to gather like this together in unity. This moment we just want to welcome all those who, who are worshipping with us today for the first time. Anybody who is here worshipping with us today for the first time. It's been good together. The Bible says when we are gathered like this then we have commanded blessings from God. We thank God for the word. We thank God for his presence. The presence of God is here, and we know that there are brethren here who are worshiping with us for the first time. Amen. So if you're here for the first time, can I kindly ask you to show by hand, anybody gathered worshiping with us for the first time? Amen. I see my sisters there. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, yes, I see someone. Thank you so much for joining us. May I kindly ask you to st do step a uh, take a step further and join me here. Yes, sister, I can see you. God bless you. Join me. Our protocol officials will be so happy to bring you. Join me. Take your bags and your wallets, your Bibles. God bless you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for choosing Action Chapel Prayer Cathedral. God bless you. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. Thank you so much, brethren. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Anybody coming from the third level? We have the time. We'll wait for you. From the wings, the overflow. God bless you. Thank you so much. You chose to share that day with us today. I guess it has been good. I have enjoyed the sermon. I've enjoyed service so far. I think you have. And we thank God that he chose today. Whilst they are coming, if you've been here for a few times, maybe even once, twice, three times, and you want to make this place your home, you want Action Chapel Prayer Cathedral to be your mother church, wherever you are, please kindly join me also. Anybody who wants to make this church his or her church, you want Papa to watch over you, to pray over you, you want to be nourished in this house. Where are you? We'll wait for you. Anybody? This is good home. Amen. Okay, today we don't have anybody like that. So we thank God, brethren. There's a scripture I love in Psalm 17, verse 5. It says, Uphold my goings in your path so that my footsteps do not slip. And that is our prayer for you today, that God would uphold your goings. Maybe you're here on a visit. May God bless and prosper your hand and whatever you came here today. Maybe you are just visiting us because somebody invited you. We want to see you again and again and again and again. We love fellowshipping with you and we thank you so much for coming. I would kindly ask you to look behind you. There's a gentleman in blue tie. He will take you away briefly and bring you back in no time. Papa has a present and a message for you. So behind you, please follow the gentleman right behind you. God bless you so much. We are grateful you chose to, today to worship with us. Can we please do it the action way? Welcome them by clapping. Give them a smile. Encourage them. Amen. Let's do it the action way. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. And whilst we are clapping, whilst we are encouraging them, I'll please ask the rest of us to just draw attention to the screen for the week's announcements. God bless us all. Amen.
Many years ago, there was a man in this nation. He was fierce. He was so powerful that his name literally causes men to tremble. And many years after, I was at Kumasi Airport and I saw him with a walking stick. And I looked at him, then said to myself, is that the man that terrified everybody? Is that a man that everyone was scared and afraid of? Is that the most powerful man in his days? What has become of him? Before then, I was traveling many years ago and I saw a vice president many, many years ago. This was about 40 years ago. And while I was going to the plane, he was sitting at the large checkpoint to the aircraft. He was also, he was also holding a walking stick. And he was alone without his wife and children no security, nobody was with him. He was all alone. And he was struggling to get up to go board the aircraft. And I looked at him. And I said, I don't want any of this. If this is the end of the power people struggle for, if this is the end of your excellency and the end of the power and, 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 and the glamour and and all that goes with it that people will kill and do everything for and throw loved ones and friends under the bus and don't care if this is the end of it I don't want anything like this I want to be surrounded by loved ones grandchildren, great grandchildren Man, we're in a time and a season where praying in the spirit is beneficiary to is beneficial to every believer amen and so we'd like to look at a few highlights from the sermon from our father his eminence the archbishop uh, he made reference to first peter chapter 5 verse 8 about being sober and being vigilant because the adversary is walking about seeking whom he may devour one way i believe we can <clears throat> succeed in these end times is to pray in the spirit and by praying in the spirit, we get all the cover that we need. Secondly, our father, the archbishop, made reference to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, about having the upper hand lest Satan should have an advantage over us. Being ignorant of the devices of the enemy is not in our interest as children of God in these end times. One weapon we use to succeed in these end times is by praying in the spirit so a timely message for the season indeed amen uh, also our father the archbishop mentioned romans chapter 13 verse 12 where he spoke about putting on the armor of light because the night is dark and day has come so we need to put on the armor of light by praying in the spirit amen and so we thank God for such a timely message that has come. Amen. If the message has been a blessing to you in any way, uh, you'd want to reach us out to us based on our communication channels, on all our social media points. You can reach us and send us feedback on what you thought about the message and how the message has blessed you and how you have benefited from the message. Amen. One other very important point our father, the Archbishop, mentioned from Hebrews 11 verse 6 was walking in faith, walking in faith, walking in faith. Our walk in Christ is a walk of faith and in, to be able to pray in the Spirit requires a level of faith. And so that is also critical to our success story as children of the Most High God. If at this point you have any testimony you'd like to share with us so that we celebrate with you on what God is doing in your life, uh, please feel free to share it on our social media points 
or the contact on your screen that leads directly to our call center. We'll be glad to celebrate with you on what God is doing in your life. If for any point or any issue in your life you need prayer, you need help with prayer, also reach out to our call center numbers on your screen. And we have a dedicated team who will be on standby to help you pray with you so that God's mercies and God's will and purpose is fulfilled totally in your life. Amen. Um, just to touch on a few other points from this, the main scripture from today, from our Father, the, His Eminence, the Archbishop, on praying in the Spirit. He made reference to the Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Uh, where the Bible states clearly that the Spirit of God helps us in our infirmity because we don't know what to pray for as we ought to. And so by praying in the Spirit, you pray according to God's will, you pray according to God's purpose for your life, and you actually get 100% answers to your prayers. Praying in the Spirit also according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, when we pray in an unknown tongue, we speak mysteries unto God. So by praying in, in the Spirit, you are speaking mysteries unto God and you are edifying yourself. You are edifying yourself. Amen. So beloved, as a child of God who is born of the Spirit, praying in the Spirit is necessary for our daily triumph even as we walk and navigate through life on this earth. The armor of light is essential for us as children of God. We are children born of light. And according to 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in Him, if we dwell in Him as He is in the light, then we'll fellowship with one another. We'll fellowship with one another. So staying in light, putting on the armor of light is necessary for our triumph as children of the Most High God. And so, so far, I believe the message from our Father, the Archbishop, His Eminence, has blessed you greatly. Amen. And we hope that you stay with us. Our service is not over. Stick around. We'll come again your way with the benediction from our Father, the Archbishop, Nicholas Duncan Williams. Let's now switch over to a few books that our Father has written that is a blessing to the body of Christ. And we hope that as you follow through, you get something that will be a blessing to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We'll see you in a moment. Amen. Harvest Restaurant on Spintex, a culinary haven where passion meets freshness. Our skilled chefs craft delightful dishes with locally sourced ingredients. Whether you're celebrating or simply savoring, our modern ambience and exceptional service promise an unforgettable dining experience. Join us for a remarkable culinary adventure at the Harvest Restaurant, 37 Spintex Road. Reserve your table now. For reservations or inquiries, contact us at 59 71 one four three nine six three the harvest blessings welcome to dominion christian academy where we honor god to fulfill our dominion mandate my name is dahlia let me take you on a quick tour these are our principal's offices we have an open door policy here for students and teachers, so we usually have a lot going on in the principal's offices. Hello. Hi. This is our chemistry, physics, and biology lab, where we engage in all of our experiential learning. So what are you doing? Raising an aquatic plant in sodium hydrogen carbonate to investigate
let's all join in and let's win souls for the kingdom. Amen. And that has to do with eternal rewards. Don't forget tomorrow morning, we have command your week, 5.30 a.m. with Papa himself. It's going to be awesome to the glory of God. And then don't forget the Wednesday fast and the Friday fast. Amen. If you're a social media influencer, please see me immediately after the service right here in all social media influencers. Amen. Thank you very much. And in, in the light of the outreach program at Ajing and all, we want to meet the people who live in these areas immediately after the service. If you can just come to my right, that will be a great blessing. We would have some quick information for you. All those who live at Ajingano, after the Shell Fuel Station, if you could please come to the... You can just pick your Bibles and start coming down. We are, the service is closing. So if, if, I, if I mention your area, please start coming down. Those who live at Springforth School, all the way to the Ghana-Canada Road and the environs, please pick your Bible and start coming down. We have a quick information for you. Those at Kahaya Restaurant and its environs, the Islamic University and its environs, Trazaku Estate Phases 1 and 2, Ability Square and its environs, Otano, Otano and its surroundings, and then the Salem Estate and its environs. If you live in those areas, can you, as we all rise up, shall we please rise? You don't want to go home? We want to go home. Shall we please rise? If you live in those areas I mentioned, Ajengano, Trazako Estate, please start coming down. Those who are traveling, please come forward. If you're traveling this way, please come for all those who live in those areas. Please come with your back, come with your Bible because we are closing the service. Please come now. Don't wait. Come now. Springford School, all the way to Ghana, Canada Road and its environs, and the Kahaya Restaurant and its environs, Islamic University and the environs, Trasago Estate, Phases 1 and 2, Ability Square and its environs, Otano and its surroundings, Salem Estate. Please meet in front of the choir. Thank you very much. If you're traveling this week, please come forward. All social influencers, if you can meet me right at the left here, let's welcome the Papa of the House. Please keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Social media influencers on the left, those traveling in the middle, those who live in those areas to the right, shall we worship with our hands lifted? For you great you do feel close so great there is no With our hands lifted up, we entrust every traveler, Heavenly Father, to your care. To the charge of the ministering angels. To the charge of the armies of heaven for a safe passage. Journey message, safety. Angelic escorts, 
angelic assistance in the air on land and on water. In the name of Jesus, praying and commanding divine preservation and escapes for all travelers, declaring in the name of Jesus that there will be no strange incidents in the air, on land, or on water. There will be no pilot errors or technical errors. There will be no bad weather patterns whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, make every crooked path straight. Let every mountain and hill be made plain. Let valleys be exalted. Make the raw places smooth for your people. Now give me Genesis 49 and 21. Naphtali is a deer let loose. I command your finances loose. I demand let finances be let loose. We let loose your finances. We let loose your trans, your deals and transactions. We let loose your bank accounts. We let loose money tied up in buildings, in lands, in properties, and in all kinds of transactions and bank accounts, home and abroad, domestic and external. We let it loose in the name of Jesus. Let loose the breakthrough of my people, said the Lord. Let loose testimonies. Let loose manifestations of the expectations of my people, said the Lord. Let loose the captives. Let loose prisoners. Let loose those held at ransom. Let loose those sick, home and abroad. In the name of Jesus, we cover every kind of medical situations and and, and, and surgeries and, and formalities and any kind of medical procedures, home and abroad. We take divine immunity. By the blood of Jesus, we cover all, home and abroad. Put your hands together, take divine immunity. Secure, cover all. A clean medical report. A clean medical report. Come on, somebody. Lift it up. Declare it. We let you loose. We let prisoners of war and hope loose. We let transactions and finances loose. Let testimonies loose this week. Decree by the blood of the covenant. A safe passage and a Passover. The name of Jesus. We release testimonies. We declare that you have testimonies this week. You will not be denied. You will not be sabotaged. We declare that at the prime of your life, you will not be disadvantaged in the name of Jesus. Have the upper hand as you live here. Have dominion. And let all that device your head be disappointed and put to shame. The Lord give you peace always. By all means. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 That the very God of peace himself give you peace always by all means the lord be with you amen love you see you on wednesday all church workers friday prayer meeting don't miss it choir for you are great you do miracles media influencers left and those who live in that area please on the right